Disclaimer, I've been doing this for more than 10 years, but still actually I have no idea what I'm doing. I just do what I think looks good. Some like it, others don't. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Remember, art is subjective. Hey guys, great news. David gave us the go on the BMW picture, so I'm going to show you how I did that one today. Sorry for the length of the last video, I know it was a little bit long, but I usually edit my photos for quite a lot of time, so I'm having a hard time kind of compressing it down to shorter videos. I'm gonna try to be better on this video, so hopefully I will be. So here we are in Lightroom. I just wanted to show you how the image turned out first before we begin. So here that is. And here's the image as it got shot. It's a really insane shot. I really love it. I really love the car as well. So first off here, it's uh, important to know that he shot two uh, photos using a polarizer filter to remove the reflection from one side and then turn the polarizer filter and remove it from this side. So we are going to have to uh, combine those two a little bit later, uh, but I'm going to do some editing first. I don't know if like it's recommended to do it that way, but I'm going to do it anyways. So I'm just going to speed through this part. Uh, I will show the settings on the screen. So now we're ready to go into Photoshop. And what I do then is that I mark both photos, holding control to select both, right click them, go export and export. Uh, then in image format here in file settings, I choose original, just keep it like that. Then you choose where it's supposed to go. Then you click export. So now those are exported, we can go into Photoshop. And now that Photoshop is open, you go File, you go Scripts, and then choose Load Files into Stack. You browse for the files. When you got your photos right here, you want to mark both of them and click Open. And then you want to check off this button because Photoshop aligns the images really well. So you want to click that, click OK. And as you can see right here, the uh, images are aligned really well. So the next step will be to choose which image goes in the background, which goes in the front. And on this one, it's not a lot of reflections here, and, but there's some here, so it's easier for me to swap them. So this one is in front, with the, because then I only, will only have to paint in the rear window. And after you've done that, you're going to click this mask button right here. It will, it will create a layer mask. Then you click Control i to invert it, and now it, the layer won't be visible at all. And what you do next is you choose a brush, the appropriate size, uh, and then you choose white as your foreground color because when you paint right now, it will show the layer that's underneath. And the next step will just be to paint in the rear window right here. Okay, what I did towards the end there is just check if there's any details right here I want to keep, but it looks great like this in my opinion. So let's go into the spot healing brush. Uh, if there's anything like these, I think they're a little bit in the way of the image. So we are going to create a new layer using Control Shift N, hit OK. And then make sure this is set to current and below. And you make a new layer and you're just gonna 
uh, hold alt to select a uh, source point right here and you're just gonna paint over it and it usually does that really great. Okay, make sure that you don't go way overboard with it because you need to keep some stuff in because you want to keep it natural. This is what I did. It's not that visible, but I removed a lot of these leaves maybe and spots in the asphalt. So the next step will be to create a new layer. We're going to start with the flaring right here. Uh, I'm going to select the brush and I'm going to pick like an orange uh, that will see fit. I might change it a little bit later, but we'll see. What I'm going to do here is to actually resize the image because it's huge. I'm going to go with like 2000 maybe. Like this. <clears throat> I have no idea what's going on with all these trucks going out outside here. Um, so, next step will be to, you just want to set this layer to overlay, maybe. You're going to want to do something here that looks kind of natural, because we're going to be adding the flare a little bit later, so we're going to need to add some color. Um, just gonna shuffle through the different blend modes here to see if there's something I like in particular. Uh, we're gonna go with overlay and we are going to turn it down a little because it's a little bit obnoxious. So next up, uh, I'm going to actually create an exposure adjustment right here. We're gonna take it up a little bit. I'm not really sure just yet, but it has to be brighter in the sky right here and it has to create some lights to make it look natural, I guess. We're going to invert uh, the layer mask using control I and then we're going to use the um, white color to paint in. Going to do something like this, I think, to make it look good. I'm mostly looking at the car right here, how that looks. I'm going to turn it a little bit down, maybe something like this looks good in my eyes. And then I'm also going to change it back to um, black and I'm going to take out a little bit of what's shining up in the skies here. Um, I think we're going to create a uh, layer mask for this one as well and we're going to paint with black to remove some of this. It's already pretty orange because I changed the temperature earlier. So something like this maybe we might have to adjust a little bit later. So using my insane Google skills, I found this flare right here. I'm gonna show you how it looks. It just looks like this. I already have a folder full of flares like this, but you can find this one on Google by just searching for a sun flare overlay or something like that. I'm gonna set it to screen, I think. You can just shuffle through the modes here to see what looks the best. But I think that actually screen will do just fine right here. I'm going to place it like, I don't really think the sun is coming through right here. It seems like it's not there at all, but the person looking at this finished photo isn't going to know that. So it doesn't really matter that much. I think we're going to place it right here. Um, and images like this, you often have to make sure that the edges are removed because there might be like sharp I don't know if you can see that right there but it's like a hard edge right there so you would just want to soften that out you can also control click the layer to see where it's marked and you can see if you see any sharp edges uh, we might have to make it a little bit warmer right here I think something like this looks good and the exposure see if we can change that a little bit we don't have to do that I think so the next step will be to uh, do the rear lights as I did in the edit. So for the rear lights, all I did was to create a new layer. Zoomed in on the rear lights and I Google up some references of these uh, lights to make sure that I got them nailed down, but you can pretty much see where the rear lights go right here, but I Google just to be sure. So I'm going to do that right now. Actually, for the next part here, you can see that it curves a lot. I just want to show you something. If you 
uh, use the pen tool and just click normally you're just gonna end up like that but if you click and then drag while still holding on to the mouse button it's gonna curve but then you might notice that it's doing some kind of weird stuff already but you can alt click on this last point and you go Something like this looks okay in my opinion. So you see we got the rear light painted in. It doesn't look that great yet, but you don't have to worry about that yet. So next thing I, next thing I do is that I go control U for the hue saturation tab right here. Then you go colorize. And now you can change the color of these. Uh, as you see, I'm doing the left light right now because I, uh, I separated them uh, for more control simply. So something like this looks good in my opinion. Uh, we might have to change it later, but you can just change this up however you want, whenever you want, so that doesn't matter. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a little bit of a glow to these lights, uh, the base here, because it will be a different color, I guess, than the rest of the glow. So we're gonna double click right here to open the layer style. We're gonna choose outer glow and because I did this the last time my settings will pop up right here but this is what I went with then you can just right click and copy layer style and right click and paste layer style and it will appear on the other one as well uh, for the next part we're going to add a new layer we're going to make a red um, so we might change it up a little bit later but we'll see uh, I'm going to set the layer to screen because it's what usually makes the most sense to me. I'm gonna add some red light right here. Um, something like this to begin with. You can scroll through the blend modes, but screen works really well right here. Uh, we're gonna start off with this and I might add another layer on top. That's also screen, but a little less opacity and we're gonna make the brush bigger to add on the glow a little bit. Basically got the finished image right here, so there's not a lot more to do with this. The uh, image that I showed you was that I created a little bit of a glow down here, which I find really hard because I'm not really sure how this will create a glow on the ground right here, but something like this maybe. But first off, I'm just going to crop it because these tiny bars here are annoying. And I'm just going to do the glow on the ground in pretty much the same way that I did these. thinking something like this. Now the next step could be to remove the fence but it's a lot of work and I don't think it will look that great. I think I can do it pretty great but we don't have time for that right now. So the next step will be for me to just jump into Lightroom because I want to do the rest of the editing in Lightroom. And also uh, when I export and go back to Lightroom I usually do Control shift s to save and then I save it as a PSD file. So we're just going to save it as a PSD file. And now that we are back into Lightroom, we are going to import this file. And what I did next with this image was just to uh, crop and resize it. So something like this. Now that we are cropped, I see something that I don't like a lot. And that is that the ground is a little bit too cold considering that there's like a sunset and this flare going through, so we're just gonna take the brush. So the next step, like now we are basically finished. What I can do is just darker, something like this. Like now that's basically it, we are finished. 
So that's it for today. Um, I have to sit on the couch because my cat took my chair uh, by the table. So now I'm sitting here. But make sure you grab the free preset that I did in this tutorial in the description below. And uh, hopefully you learned something from this video. Uh, I sure hope so at least. And I hope you enjoyed it enough to subscribe and give a like or a comment. Thanks guys. Also, almost forgot. Huge shout out to David for this image. It's an insane car and a really great image. So thanks for allowing me to use it in this video.